guys, good morning. It is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. And today we are going to look at our journal and do our check-in. We're gonna look at day two of our brand new packet. We're gonna take a look at Google Classroom and then talk about uh, Voorhees daily announcements. So let's take a look at our journal. All right, yesterday I finished my day by saying, today I started reading a new chapter book. I also made tacos. I did make tacos, they were really good. And I started a new chapter book. It is about the evil queen in Snow White. So I'm learning about like, why is she the way she is? We'll see what happens. And then today for our check-in, it says I'm feeling a three today because I have to do laundry today. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but I don't really like doing laundry. Like. I don't mind putting it in the washer and the dryer, but then when it comes time to folding it all, I hate folding laundry, but it has to be done. So I'm going to do it and that's okay. All right, journal and check-in, check. Next, we're gonna look at day two of our packet. So I have it right here. So I'm just, oh, this packet's so heavy because it's so big this time, but that's all right. Um, here we are. I'm looking at day two. For reading, it says read for 15 minutes. Use a book of your own or a foldable book from the end of this packet. And we do have our little foldable books that we made yesterday. If you missed that, go back, take a look at how to make your foldable books from the back of this packet. And then it says read the first two diary entries aloud together, alternating paragraphs. I skipped a part. A dinosaur named Sue. That's the name of the, the reading. So we're gonna read those and then discuss the tone of the journal. Point out the phrases, what a day, and we couldn't believe our eyes. Hmm, one thing I notice is that they have exclamation marks, so maybe we should look for that. All right, let's take a look at the reading. All right. So here it is, a dinosaur named Sue. And it says, a journal about my summer dig by Terry Patterson. And it starts on August 11th, 1990. Oh, I was alive during that time, 1990. Okay, cool. Tomorrow is the last day of the dig. I can't believe I've been in South Dakota for 10 weeks. It's been a long, hot, but great summer. We dug up many dinosaur bones. Some are more than 60 million years old. I have a lot to tell everyone back at school. August 12th, 1990, so it's the next day. What a day, our truck had a low tire. Pete Larson and I went into town to get it fixed. Sue Hendrickson stayed behind. She wanted to look for bones in one more place before we go home. Sue was so excited when she came back to camp. She found some huge bones sticking out of a cliff. They were too big to be anything but a dinosaur. Sue knew they were from a meat eater. In this part of the world, it could only be a T-Rex. And if you wanna stop and look at these pictures, definitely do that. This is kind of long, but we are going to read it. Sue brought back two pieces of bone to show Pete. He agreed that they were T-Rex bones. We left right away to see where they came from. When we got there, we couldn't believe our eyes. The ground below the cliff was covered with pieces of bone. More than 10 bones stuck out of the cliff. Pete thought that a whole skeleton might be buried there. He named the dinosaur Sue after the person who found it. We only have one problem right now. The bones are under almost 30 feet of dirt and rock. It's going to take a lot of hard work to remove it. Pete, Sue, and I have a big job ahead of us. I guess we're not going home yet. August 14th, 1990. So the last journal entry was the 12th, so two days later. Early this morning, we got started digging up the T-Rex. We couldn't use a big machine to move the rock and dirt. A machine might break or crush the fossils. So we did all the work by hand. Metal bars helped us pull away large rocks. We used picks to break up smaller rocks and shovels to move dirt. The sun beat down on us all day, 
but we hardly noticed. We kept thinking about the T-Rex. We wondered how much of its skeleton we would find. We hoped it would be in good shape. And then these pictures here, this one says, Sue found these bones sticking out of a cliff. And this one says, Sue used tools to carefully remove the rocks and dirt from the fossils. So that's pretty cool. August 18th, 1990, so four days later. Our hard work over the past few days finally paid off. Today we got down to the fossils. We had been even more careful. We used small hand tools to remove the dirt and rock around the bones. August 21st, 1990, so 18, 19, 20, 21, three days later. While we worked, Pete told us about the other T-Rex fossils that people have found. Some finds were just a few bones. No known T-Rexes have even half their bones, but it looks as though Sue found almost a whole skeleton. This is an important discovery. It will help scientists learn so much about T-Rex. The skeleton will also make an amazing museum display. And this picture here says, digging out bones is a hard and dirty job. August 23rd, 1990. Pete dug out the skull today. It's almost five feet long. That's really big. Like I'm like over five feet tall. So imagine a head being like as big as me. Okay, let me go back. Sorry, that was like kind of crazy for me to think about. Pete dug out the skull today. It's almost five feet long. He thinks that this T-Rex was a giant. Its bones are bigger than any T-Rex he has seen. These bones are in great shape too. Most fossil bones are chipped, broken, or crushed. We took pictures as we worked. It's important to record the positions of the bones. That information will help scientists who study these fossils later. We also found a fossil of plants and other dinosaurs. These finds will help us learn more about life long ago. And this picture here says, Pete removed rocks and dirt from Sue's skull. Remember the dinosaur's name is Sue. August 29th, 1990. As we dug up the bones today, we left some rock around them. The rock will protect the bones on their way to the lab. When they get there, we'll remove the rock. Weak bones get special care. They get a thin coat of glue and layers of tin foil. Then we wrap them in a plaster cast. Sometimes we add pieces of wood for extra strength. And then this says a plaster cast helps protect the bone during the trip to the lab. So that was August 29th. So a few days later, September 1st, 1990. We left the dig today. It took 17 days to dig Sue out of the ground. All the bones are finally on their way to the lab. It will take a long time to clean up the skeleton. My summer was longer and more amazing than I expected. I'm sad it is over, but I'll be happy to sleep in a real bed again. So that was September 1st, 1990. This is May 17th, 2000. So that's like almost 10 years later. This journal has been in a box for almost 10 years. My summer with the two suit, oh, sorry. Let me start that over. This journal has been in a box for almost 10 years since my summer with the two Sues. I pulled it out tonight to add one last entry. I saw both Sues again today. The T-Rex is now on display in Chicago. Pete, Sue, and I are happy that Sue has a place of honor. Scientists can keep studying the bones and people from around the world can visit the largest and most complete T-Rex ever found. Sue is a big attraction in the Field Museum's Hall of Dinosaurs. Sue is 40 and a half feet long. Experts think this dino might have weighed 15,000 pounds. The bones alone weigh 3,922 pounds. So there's a picture of it in the museum there. All right, and that was the reading of the journal entry. That was actually really fun to read. Let's go back to our directions. It says, discuss the tone of the journal. Point out phrases, what a day, and we couldn't believe our eyes. So how do you think the writer was feeling during the times of those journal entries? Like, 
think about that. Maybe discuss that with somebody in your home. All right, writing. Our writing prompt today says write a letter to the group of people and a dinosaur named Sue. And you do have your writing paper for that. It's right here. And you could say, you know, dear Sue, Jeff, and I don't know if we know the other guy. Hmm. Let's look. Let's look. We can always go back and get our evidence. Let's see. There's Pete, Sue, and I, but what's your name? Huh, not sure. So, we don't know all their names. We could say, dear friends, dear scientists, whatever works for you, and you're writing a letter to them. I read your journal entries. I thought it was blank that you were digging up dinosaur bones. I thought it was cool. I thought it was neat. I thought it was weird. Um, whatever you think, write it right there. Write a letter to them. What would you want to tell these people who spent the summer looking up dinosaur bones? And then we have more past tense irregular verbs. And it says some past tense verbs do not end in ed. These verbs are called irregular verbs. Examples include the following. So we have the present and the past. So present means it's happening right now. And the past means it already happened. So hide, you can say, um, I am going to hide the present in the closet. But if I already did it, I would say I hid the present in the closet. Um, yeah. And then throw and through. Like, I'm going to throw a ball. But if we already did it, we threw a ball. Uh, dig and dug. Grow and grew. And then see and saw. Choose the correct past tense verb from the box to complete each sentence. Write the verb on the line. So we have hid, throw, grew, dig, grow, hide, dug, and threw. My puppy blank big this year. Hmm. Yesterday, I blank a ball to him. He blank a hole under a bush. He blank the ball in the hole. And then this part says rewrite each sentence using the past tense of the underlined verb. So instead of saying we dig in the sand, it says using the underlined verb, but it's not underlined, so I'll underline it for you. Okay. We dig in the sand. So if it's happening right now, you dig. But if you did it yesterday, what would you write? We blank in the sand. I see the show. So if you see it right now, present. But what happens if it was yesterday? I blank the show. All right, now let's take a look at math. For math today, we have, um, ooh, it says start with day two math task, bundling and unbundling. Continue with day two math activities. End with day two math fluency where students, where student is encouraged to solve a problem using multiple strategies. All right, so first we have our math task, bundling and unbundling. It says make true equations. Write one number in every space. Draw a picture if it helps. All right, I'm gonna start this with you so, um, You'll kind of know what it looks like, and then you can finish the rest. So 100 plus 4 tenths. Well, I'm going to draw that out. I'm going to use my board here. So it says 100 plus 4 tenths. So if I have 100 and then 4 tenths, 100 plus 10, 20, 30, 40 equals 140. So I know it's kind of sloppy, but I'll write it neater on my paper. So if I have 100 and then one, two, three, four. So there we go. And we know that 100 plus 40 equals 140. So I'm going to write that answer here. So there we go. The next one says four tens and 100. So what happens if I draw that out? One, two, three. It sounds very similar. So that's 40 
plus 100. Oh, I see what happened. 40 plus 100. It's the same thing. 140. Okay. And then B, it's kind of backwards. It says 14 tens equals 10 tens plus blank tens. So 10 tens plus this many tens equal 14 tens. And if you want to draw it out, feel free to do that. Um, and then this says 14 tens equals blank hundred plus four tens. So you're going to put 10 of those tens together to make a hundred. Let's go ahead and do that one together because that one sounds a little trickier. So 14 tens equals 10 tens. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. My tens are looking really fat, but they're 10. Sorry about that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is really a hundred, but that's okay. So 10 tens plus blank tens. So, hmm, 10. Oh, I can count up 11, 12, 13, 14. So I need four more tens. And so I'm going to write that right here, four tens. And then it says 14 tens equal blank hundred and four tens. Well, I kind of already told you the answer. If we put all these together, that's 100 plus four tens. So there's that there. And then I'm going to let you do C, D, E, and F on your own, but you could always go back and watch how we did this. And then Let's look at our math assignment for today. It says, you can use pictures to represent hundreds, tens, and ones. So for 126, it says 100, two tens, and six ones. And there's a picture there. So it says, write and draw how many hundreds, tens, and ones. For 192, we have 100, nine tens, and two ones. So we could draw that. We can do one square, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tens, and then two ones, which is like two dots, right? All right. See if you can do 267 on your own. And then down here, it gives us words for us to write the number. So three hundreds, two tens, five ones. What's that number? Two hundreds, four tens, and nine ones, what's that? Eight hundreds, seven tens, and zero ones, write that number there. And then our math fluency today has 24 plus 18. Up here, you're going to use any strategy to solve it. You're gonna use models or visuals. I like to use base 10 blocks, but you could also use like a number line if you wanted to. I'm not as good at that, but if that's something that you feel um, like you're strong at doing, feel free to give it a try. Then write a story. Hmm, 24 snakes were slithering in the grass. Uh, 14, 14, that's an 18. 18 more snakes join them. How many snakes are there all together? And you could write that story. That's not a very good story though, so hopefully you come up with a better one. And then how do you know your answer is correct? Explain in words, maybe one or two sentences, how you know that that's the right answer. All right, last is to go over the next step of our art. And yesterday we practiced drawing lines. It was really quick, but I guess it's part of the process of learning. And I'm looking for it in our packet right now. Where are you art project? There we are. All right, and I went ahead and carefully tore out my practice lines paper. So here it is here, we practiced a straight line, a zigzag, a wavy, a curly, and then I made this crazy line. Day two direction says, designing your art. Use different types of lines to create an abstract design. And I kind of see down here what like the end product is. So, hmm, I don't wanna copy this. I want my own thing, so let's see. I have my lines here. I'm gonna turn my paper over and I'm gonna go ahead and do it a landscape way, like this. And then I'm going to make my lines. My favorite lines are the wavy ones and the zigzag ones. So I'm gonna start with 
Oh, I really want my black pen. Hold on. Boom. So I'm going to do zigzag lines. So there we go. I am going to do wavy lines. I'm going to do more wavy lines. I think I'm going to do one more wavy line. They're my favorite. So it looks like this so far. And I think I'm going to put one more zigzag line right here. So I have my lines, but it says to make a design. So I think I'm going to put some patterns in here. So maybe in the middle one, I'm going to put some like circles or dots. put some circles and dots in there um and this one I think I'm gonna put some stars one more all right um how about if I put like swirls in one so I'm going to do so my swirls look kind of like this I think I need to put a few more right there all right swirls and then hmm maybe I'll do like some like little lightning bolt zigzags makes me think of like Harry Potter. Hmm, I need two more designs. There we go. Um, how about some shapes? Let's do squares. Ooh, you could also do stripes or hearts or flowers or anything you really want. You guys are really creative, so I think you're going to do a really good job with this. So there's that, and I have one more. What should I put on there? Hmm, how about happy faces? Ooh, that one got a little funny, but that's all right. There we go. So I designed my abstract design and it looks like tomorrow we'll start coloring it in. So tomorrow I'm going to bust out my crayons and my markers and color it in. All right, day two. Check. All right, Google Classroom. I did not add anything new into Google Classroom today because there are lots of things for you to look at and to complete. And I know some of you guys are behind on that, so I wanna give you a chance to take a look at that. You can look at Google Classroom from a computer, a Chromebook, your phone, a tablet. There is an app for Google Classroom, so definitely get that if you haven't yet. And then if you have any questions for me, you can contact me either through Class Dojo or your parents can email me. My email address is right here. So there you go, you can email me. And if you forgot how to log into Google Classroom, look at a couple of the videos from last week and it will tell you what to do and how to do that. So Google Classroom, check. The last thing I need to talk to you guys about are the Voorhees daily announcements. Mr. Casayas posts daily announcements every day for um, Voorhees students. And it's really good to watch that because he knows things that are going on in the school. I know things that go on for second grade learning, but Mr. Casayas, he has the school information. So you definitely want to watch that every day. And um, I'll put the link for today's, like in our description for today. And you should subscribe to his Gritty Principal channel. That way you can see announcements every single day about what's happening. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you have a great day and a great week and stay gritty.